Walking Your Trap, Take Over Your Trap. Well, I hadn't heard that song in a long time up until last night when the Steelers won. But anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts on the game that we all watched together. Shout out to everybody that came through the stream. Uh, between the Steelers and the Ravens. Uh, and this game had some serious implications on the line uh, for both teams. They also needed some help. Steelers got the help. Uh, Steelers also helped themselves. Uh, if Ravens would have won... They would not have gotten the help since the Dolphins beat the Patriots, but, I mean, Ravens didn't even help themselves, so here we are. Anyway, um, wow, what a season it's been. We'll, we'll talk about the season in whole uh, later on, but this game specifically, wow. This game, uh, yet again, the Ravens, uh, their offense just does a lot of the same stuff. At, at least this week they got a touchdown. Shout out to Latavius Murray having literally his best game of the season, but, again, something that we talked about before, the, the, the interior run game has opened up so much, so significantly, because of Ben Cleveland. As soon as they inserted Ben Cleveland in the lineup, that helped Latavius Murray's game so much more. Because he's been that the, the, the better interior runner more than Devontae Freeman. Devontae Freeman has been the better running back, and he's got more burst. But with Latavius Murray's game, Ben Cleveland has helped him out so much. So, Ben Cleveland... That's your left guard moving forward. It's him and nobody else. Um, and, I mean, it probably should have happened a little while back, but it's all good. Anyway, um, and speaking of the Ravens run game, see, it, it's, it's Black Monday. It's Black Monday, so a lot of coaches around the league are getting fired. The Vikings got rid of their GM and head coach Mike Zimmer. The, the, the Bears got rid of their GM uh, and their head coach Matt Nagy. Um, who else? The, the Dolphins got rid of Brian Flores. Um, it's just, it's been a lot going on around the league. Uh, and I know a lot of Ravens fans are hoping that Greg Roman gets fired. But why? Why do Ravens fans, a lot of them hope Greg Roman gets fired? Well, uh, one of the reasons that they do is because a lot of times he disrupts his own flow of the game. I told y'all this before. I don't remember who said it, but I love how they said it. They said, Greg Roman, hey, in between, from, from the 20s to the 20, Greg Roman could do his thing. From the 20, well, and sometimes, it's a big yikes, but usually from the 20 to the 20, he does his thing. He's, he's, he's amazing. He's phenomenal. Of course, everything with the run game, da 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 But then, inside the 20, those critical moments, like we always talk about situational play calling. That's where it gets suspect. Now, going into this game, I didn't know that the Steelers had the worst run defense in the league. And if not the worst, it's one of the worst. I didn't even know that until a lot of y'all reminded me of that during the live stream. And I remember watching the game and the Ravens got to what? The two yard line, something like that. They got in the red zone again. I mean, just like last week when they kept getting to the red zone, but no scores. Uh, and they just refused to feed Murray. They refused to feed him. And he had been eating yesterday. He'd been getting those big chunks of yards. Uh, he even got some games where the, the spot might have been a little iffy. But Latavius Murray was doing his thing. But this is not a Ravens Steelers game from yesterday problem with Greg Roman. This has been a consistent problem where he just he doesn't have a seem to have a feel for the flow of the game. And, and this has been a, something with uh, with Ravens coaching staff in general that can be a big problem to where a team they have a weakness. And it's like, okay, we as fans, we we know what their weakness is. I'm sure the coaching staff knows what their weakness is, but why do the Ravens fail and refuse to really take advantage of that weakness? And then Ravens, a lot of times, they will have a strength. They'll have something that they're doing well, and a lot of times they will just get away from it. And yesterday was another example of that. Um, so yet again, the, the Ravens just, they failed. They failed the offense, let them down. The defense, even though they had some spotty issues throughout the game, they held the Steelers to 13 points in regulation. 13 points. If, if a defense is holding a team to 13 points, oh, man, that's a win for the offense. 13 points, that's two touchdowns without, without one of the extra points. 
Come on, the 13 points. Like, oh, 13, 13 points. Oh, yeah, that's easy money, right? Not for these Ravens. Now, we know that's a lot of people hurt. We get that for sure. Oh, we get it for sure. Um, but the 13 points, there's no excuse for 13 points. Now, um, Tyler Huntley, this game was a little up and down for him. Um, the interception that he threw, uh, he didn't put any heat on the ball. So When they showed the replay, I saw what he saw. Um, and Sutton was out of the picture. But since he floated it, since he floated that ball, that led Sutton, that gave Sutton time to recover to pick it off. Um, and Mark Andrews, I know in the post game, he said, oh, yeah, I could have came back to the ball. Then that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, that could have helped, too. Well, that might have made it an incompletion or something. But still, it was just not a good decision. And even, you know what? Excuse me. Even though it wasn't the worst decision, just the uh, the execution, he, he didn't put the zip on it. He, he got to put some heat on that one, man. Because Mark Andrews is open. If an NFL player is open, you got to get it to him, especially in the red zone. Because it's not like he's open and he's running in stride. No, he's sitting in one spot. So that's when you definitely got to put some extra heat on that thing. Um, but I know, of course, Bateman was open. There were a couple, there were a couple of times where Bateman was. He, I, man, I, I said it during the stream yesterday. Bateman probably he probably asked him for a trade in the middle of the game right now. Cause Bateman was he did. But with Bateman, this is not a, 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 this is not something out the blue. This guy like continues to be open, but he continues to not be involved, especially in the second half of games. In the first half, Bateman will be involved a little bit, but second half he won't. It'll be like he's gone. And it's like, it's the craziest thing. Now, um, Hollywood. Oh, man. That is, is a oh, rough game from Hollywood. Rough. But this is a bad game from Hollywood. Um, of course, and, and he he contributed to the Ravens uh, that, that swing. A 14-point swing. Well, actually, it, it, I guess it was a, a, really a 10-point swing at, the, at a minimum. I can't say it was 14, but... And the reason I say the swing is because Mark Andrews, of course, that's in that interception that Tyler Huntley threw intended for Mark Andrews, that could have been seven points. But even if it wasn't at, at the worst, it would have been three points. But Tyler Huntley to Hollywood, he threw a touchdown to him. He threw a touchdown to him, and that would have been seven points. Hollywood was open. It was in the end zone. All he had to do was catch. That's it. But he dropped it. He dropped it. So that was seven points that he dropped. And at least three points, possibly seven, that Tyler Huntley gave up when he uh, that interception, fourteen point swing. That's your ball game right there, and not necessarily meaning that that would end it, but that'll put a lot more pressure on the Steelers and put the Ravens in much better position. But those things happen, and it was unfortunate. Uh, so Hollywood, and then Hollywood in the end of the fourth quarter. When the Ravens, are, uh, no, I think that was that in overtime or the end of the fourth quarter. I forgot when it was. When Tyler Huntley threw that dime to him on the sideline. And uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, amazing play by Minka Fitzpatrick. He, he Sterling Moore that ball, like Sterling Moore did to Lee Evans in that AFC Championship game against the Patriots. Where Lee Evans caught it, Hollywood had caught it. But the defensive back, they ain't give up on the play. Sterling Moore knocked it out of Lee Evans' hand. Mingo Fitzpatrick knocked it out of Hollywood's hand. He got to hold on to those, man, because it's, it's like with Hollywood yesterday. Like, he struggled with drops all season. Um, but yesterday, the drops hurt that much more um, because they came in critical times, man. They, 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 the, the, they were situational drops, and they were just – I mean, a drop is a drop, period. But it hurts that much more when it's, it changes the game. Um, so – uh, that was just, it was tough. He did get his 1,000 yards, though. But, um, yeah, those, those, those drops hurt big time, man. Ooh, that was painful to watch, man. That was, that was painful to watch. Um, Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, he had, um, he had a decent game. Uh, Huntley and him, their connection was like, it was like first they were riding in with, with uh, they were riding on a road. Um, no bridges over them or anything. They had great reception and all that. They had a great connection. But then throughout different points of the game, it was like they were riding in a tunnel. They were riding in a tunnel, and that connection got cut off because it was in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, sometimes Huntley would throw a good ball. Mark Andrews would catch it. Other times Huntley would throw it too far in front of him. 
Uh, another time, Mark Andrews made a poor body adjustment on a catch that should have been had. And their, their connection was just, it just seemed to be spotty this game. Um, I was hoping, I mean, I wasn't expecting because that's a lot of yards to get. I think he was like 147 yards short of a tight end record for most yards in the season. Even though a lot of these these numbers are kind of kind of skewed now since it's 17 games and not 16 games. And before it used to be, I think, what, 12 games in the season. So, I mean, it's always been changing. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I, it, it was a lot to ask for him to get 147 yards or however much it was. But it is what it is. It was possible, though, but it just it didn't end up happening. Um, Duvernay, he was out there. Uh, a lot of returns because there was a lot of punts. Um but as far as on offense, I think he got one jet sweep. Of course, jet sweep king, we all know. Uh, and that was it, I believe. Tylen Wallace, he on that fake punt that the Ravens did, uh, he got injured on that play. I don't think he came back. Uh, man, speaking of injuries, Tyus Bowser toward the end of the game tore his Achilles. Uh, so he'll be out for a significant amount of time. So we'll see what the Ravens do with that because the ti the timing is just the worst, man. It's the because it happened at the end of the season. So now you got to go through that whole recovery process. You might not even be back for next year, early on next year, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, back to uh, offense. James Prochet, he was inactive, yeah, of course. Um, and yeah, say oh Sammy Watkins was active, but he wasn't really active. Um, so he was just out there. Uh, Ravens offensive line, Pat McCarry, he was in and out. He had got hurt. Then he came back. Uh, David Sharp, uh, TJ Watt was just unblockable. He, he was unblockable. It's, and it seemed like the Ravens didn't even want to block him. Cause when he would come around the edge, they would give him a little push, a little baby push. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Great. Uh, Bradley Bozeman in the game yesterday started off the game with that, uh, his own butt fumble. He hiked the ball to his butt, fumbled it. And then Tyler Huntley recovered it and he fumbled it. Um, then the Steelers recovered it And I was like, oh, okay, wow This is, um, great, 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 great job, Raven Great, great way to start off Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just It's crazy, because I went into this game With, with really no expectations I didn't really expect a win or a loss I, I just went into the game with no expectations I didn't expect to get help from the Jaguars Because I, I figured, oh, yeah, the Jaguars I, They, they haven't Colts haven't won in a long time, but this will probably be the week where the Colts end up winning. They go to the playoffs, blah, 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 blah. It's, their season is on the line. They ain't about to lose to the Jaguars with their season on the line, are they? They not. They No. I hope they do, so that will help the Ravens, but I don't see it happening. But, nope, it ended up happening. So, I think that really, um, that really got me a lot more invested in this game than I had planned on being. Uh, when the Jag, when it, when we saw the Jaguars score and they were winning, and we were thinking, uh oh, like Ravens got a shot, they got a shot, because the game that I felt like was gonna be the the hardest for uh, for the to go in favor of the Ravens, Jaguars were blowing the Colts out. So I'm like, oh man, so the Patriots, they they gotta play the Dolphins later, uh, for first in the AFC East. Bills, they playing later. But I I expected both of those two teams to win, the Bills and the Patriots. Um, and the Bills, I think, would have had a tiebreaker. But then the Dolphins lost. But the Ravens didn't help themselves out anyway. So the Jaguars' win meant nothing for the Ravens and everything for the Steelers. And Steelers won. And then as long as the game didn't end in a tie last night. Oh, that game hurt me, man. I Man, I, I really wanted that game to end in a tie. And when Chargers head coach called that timeout, that was the beginning of the end. Broke my heart, man. Because, in fact, I was watching the game, and then I turned it off. I turned it off. Um, me and my wife and Carter, we started playing something on the, on the PlayStation. Uh, and then I checked the game on my phone, and I, it, it said it's overtime. I was like, what? So I turned it on, started watching it. And then, uh, yeah, it was the beginning of the overtime, and I'm like, all right, let, let's get through these 10 minutes. But And they almost made it, but, yeah, we know. So um, back to the Ravens and Steelers. Um Defense, um, defense. Wow, was that that was Tony Jefferson where he gave up the? Uh, I think it was the third and eight, the third and eight to uh, to the tight end, um, and he was right there, just close, close play, but not close enough. 
And that pretty much sums up the Ravens season. Not close enough. Come up, come up close, but end up coming up short. Um, the defense, they, again, points-wise, they were holding the Steelers down. Held them down. 13 points in regulation, amazing. But then um, on that, the oh, it was the fourth down in overtime. Oh, man. That that last drive, oh, it was so much pain on that last drive because a theme for the Ravens a lot of times this year, first down, get a stop. Second down, get a stop. Third down, here we go, y'all. Here we go. They give it up. They give it up. And But that last drive, um, they did that a couple times on the first and second down and then gave it up on third down. But then this time, first down, got to stop. Second down, got to stop. Third down, got to stop. It was like, oh. And it was like you just like mm, this game was exhausting, man. Um, but it's like you just like oh okay here, here we go 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 here we go. And Roethlisberger it, initially when it was live, it looked like he threw the ball a little bit low, but not low enough. And I think it was Ray Ray McLeod that ended up making that catch for the first down. It was like oh, that's that. Cause it's like, man, it's, it's fourth down. You got an opportunity. Like, if you get a stop here, you you really get a stop. Cause it's fourth down. It's fourth down. Like that's it's, it's all or nothing. And they got it all. And it was just like, oh my goodness, man. Oh, that was that was painful. Um, but defense, uh, defense, they really weren't getting any pressure. I mean, same old story, same old stuff. Um, Kevon Seymour, he did get a sack. Uh. But Ben Roethlisberger, he gets the ball out pretty quick, uh, but he had plenty of time. Defense, they 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 had their missed opportunities too. We talked about the missed opportunities on offense, but defense had theirs as well. Brandon Stevens, oh, he's been getting so much more comfortable. Every week he gets better. Every week he gets better. He had jumped uh, 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 jumped the route and, and could have picked it off, but he dropped it. Ben Roethlisberger threw a deep ball to, um, I forgot who, who it was for, but it wasn't nowhere by any Steelers. Chuck Clark was all by himself. He made a diving attempt to catch it. He dropped it, of course. He back to the regular Chuck Clark. Um, you know, Chuck, Chuck Clark, good for some dropped interceptions, man. <laughs> he, he good for, if he caught every interception that he dropped, oh, man, that would be crazy, man. That would be something, but it is what it is. Um, last week was just ooh, an anomaly of a game for him, I guess. Um, Geno Stone... He made a really nice pick. Tay Tay thought he was about to get a diving pick, but Geno Stone jumped and got it. So that that was nice to see. Great play. Um, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen in yesterday's game. He had he had a rough game yesterday. Uh just it was back to the missed tackles. Um and I know that that's something that he had struggled with early this season. He did have some nice moments though. It wasn't all bad. He had some nice moments. There were two plays in a row. One where he he timed it. The, 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 he timed the snap perfectly. And it was so Ray Lewis esque. And I, I just I, I loved it. It was the most beautiful thing. But he didn't even make the tackle. He started, he slowed the uh not Devontae Freeman, he slowed um Najee Harris down. Like he he started stopping him. But he missed the tackle. But then somebody else came and cleaned it up. But it was a great play that started off by Patrick Queen. But then there was another play, either the play before that one or the play after that one, where he had got another nice stop. I forgot what happened on the play, but I remember it was two plays in a row. Um, but then there was some missed tackles, some missed open field tackles that end up leading to guys getting more yards, the yak. And it. Oh, Ravens just um it's it's like they gotta get back to basics or something when it comes to tackling, the fundamental tackling and just cause that's how Anthony Avery got hurt. That's how he got hurt, cause he he threw his body at Bengals tight end Uzama and Uzama's knees like went right into Anthony Avery's rib cage and yeah, that ended his season and probably ended his uh, career with the Ravens because um, he's heading into free agency. I don't think Ravens are bringing him back um, simply because I just I think they wouldn't mind bringing him back, but I just, just money game. He will get paid a lot more money somewhere else uh, than rather than from the Ravens. Um, but yeah, they got they got to work on fundamental tackling, man. They have to. Uh, who else? Um, the cornerbacks. Wink had them giving up a lot of cushion. 
And that was crazy because Steelers throw a lot of short passes. That's their bread and butter. They throw a lot of short passes. Ben Roethlisberger did not. I don't. Remember, I, the only deep ball I remember him throwing was the interception. That's it. But I feel like Ravens could have played with like a single high safety all game and just been straight like that. Because Steelers don't throw. They don't throw deep balls like that. And they weren't throwing them yesterday. But the fact that Ravens uh, corners kept giving them so much cushion, it was uh, it was kind of crazy. It's crazy to see. Um, and that just you give somebody a cushion like that again. They they were holding them down thirteen points, thirteen points. So the the cushion obviously ain't hurt that bad. Um, but well, in the end it did. Oh, big yikes! But it it is what it is. So now Ravens they finished the season eight and nine, so a game under five hundred. Um, yeah, no more eight and eight seasons for anybody. That is out the window. Uh, but. It was a good game. Um, it was a fun game, exhausting game. Wish the Ravens would have won, but they didn't. So, oh well, this season is over. It's done. And yeah, now it's the off season for Baltimore. Have a lot of decisions to make. Uh, have a lot of uh, yeah, very very interesting decisions to make. Um, will they be made though? Will any changes be made? I don't really see it. I I, I don't see it happening. Uh, I know a lot of people, I know even Coach yesterday, he made a good point. He said um, with the Ravens, they they were at one point eight and three, and they went from eight and three to eight and nine. Uh, and if w- whatever happens next, whether changes are made or not, that, that'll say a lot about uh, Bashadi. Uh, and it'll, it'll just say a lot about the front office. It'll, it'll say a lot depending on what they do or they don't do. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I just, I don't see anything happening. I really don't, but we can talk more in detail about that later, but I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, sucks that this is the last, uh, post-game thoughts video for the Ravens this year. Um, I had a lot of fun doing these, of course, you know, I have a, I have a lot of fun making all kinds of videos, but yeah, this is it for this. So appreciate y'all watching. Um, appreciate y'all supporting the channel. Uh, thank you. Hope you're having a really good day. The vi- remember the videos ain't going nowhere. The Ravens, they gone. But the videos ain't going nowhere. I love y'all. Y'all keep y'all heads up with whatever you got going on. Appreciate you. We out.